it's very important to talk about what is your image of your audience. Hello and welcome back to Offspring Magazine, the podcast. I'm your host, Srinath Ramkumar. So, welcome back to the second part of our discussion with Dr. Christina Beck, where we're going to talk about science communication, but with a different perspective, more importantly, in a perspective towards the public and not just the scientists. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed this discussion as much as we did in making it. And without any further ado, let's get on with our interview of Dr. Christina Beck. So moving on from the previous topic and uh, into a little more of an edgy topic, which is uh, the the po the politics and policy in Germany, at least, is Max Planck Society connected to politics in some way, and do they give any statements to the uh, to political decision based on research from the Max Planck Society? Um, yes, um, um, we have an own department to make connections to the politics. It's uh, our department for science policy and strategy. Um, and maybe this could be the next uh, interview partner for you, uh, my colleague Christiane weiss Solimena, who is the head of this department uh, since November last year. And uh, I think it would be also interesting to get some insights in her job. Um, so it's, it's very important for us, for the society to bring scientific expertise into the policy advisory process. Uh, and the current pandemia is only one example. The presidents of the four big German research organizations, Max Planck, Fraunhofer, Helmholtz and Leibniz, um, supported uh, the scientific analysis of their scientists Uh, on the spread of the virus with a joint statement to the politics. So maybe you have seen this because uh, there was a, a, a lot of uh, response to this statement from the media also as, as well as from the politics. So and, and you have also some other fields where it's very important that, uh, um, that you not only um, give advice to the politics but also present in the public debate. This is for the, for example, the field of animal research, uh, but it's also the field of, of uh, genetic engineering. So um, if we do not com communicate in this, um, in this public debates, if we do not um, give advice uh, to politicians uh, regarding these topics, uh, then at the end uh, we Yeah, we have to live or we must live with regulations which maybe not only limit the application um, of, of some, some results and inventions, uh, but also limit um, uh, our um, um, research, uh, basic research also. And in the field of, of animal research, one can say at the moment there is, uh, especially in Germany, The great or the big risk uh, that there is too, uh, um, not enough communication, not enough transparency about uh, the research and uh, the, the goals of this research and the benefits of this research. And, and therefore, we should take the task to talk about animal research also now in the situation of pandemia, because we would not have this wonderful vaccines and everyone hopes that this vaccines now will uh, bring us in a new situation I, I, I hope in the autumn of this year uh, we would not have these vaccines without basic reach research with animals within the last 20 years so it's, it's an important possibility for us now to talk about um, animal research and the benefits of animal research now and I, I want to encourage the scientific community to do more now. So we have an um, initiative, I do not know if you know about this, the Max Planck Society is part of the Allianz initiative 
ähm, Understanding Animal Research äh, in Germany Tierversuche verstehen. And there is a small group of people um, who is engaged in, in, in uh, building up an, a, a, a website uh, which exists now for or is existing for about three years now. And um, we are um, also um, engaged in, in different public debate, debates in, in um, dialogue formats, podium discussions, and so on and so on. But at the end, I think we need a move through the science community here in Germany and, and come at the end uh, to a situation uh, as in the United Kingdom, where every university, every research institute is, is transparent about uh, animal research at the institution. So uh, what, are, what are the animals we are uh, doing research with? Uh, what are the research topics and what are the goals of research topics? Yeah, if we cannot increase um, transparency and communication within the next years, I think there is a great risk that uh, we um, will get uh, or will be limited in the near future by new political regulations um, uh, in the field of animal research. No, so uh, we understand that, uh, you know, of course, communicating science to policymakers is one thing, but in general, communicating... So the policymakers eventually are people elected elected by people. And these people will have, also have to understand a little bit of what these things are yes. happening. So they, they make informed choices about the policymakers as well. So I, all I'm coming around to say is science communication is important. Is and important? this is the, is, is, it's the new topic uh, because science communication is... It's it's also one of these topics which is super passionate for me and very close to my my uh, ideology. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we started the Offspring uh, podcast series. Yeah. And uh, so, for the Max Planck Society as a whole, where how or what does science communication imply for MPS? And because we saw that there's a recent uh, uh, article, if I'm not wrong, in Frontiers about uh, communicating science with uh, using popular you know influencers yes so <laughs> what uh, so what does science communication imply for max planck society the first beginning 2010 we only uh, use the platform youtube to put our videos on this channel so um, in in 2011 we started a series of educational videos um, because um, in, in, co in, in, um, together with the corresponding Max brushes, BioMax, GeoMax, TechMax, uh, we think we thought it's a good opportunity um, to bring uh, scientific results into school lessons uh, via video. And I think from the from the uh, figures, uh, so the number of of uh, downloads and views, we can say this was very successful. So, and these educational videos are, for example, really long runners. So our, our animations have about uh, more than 200,000 or 300,000 views. So this is fine. But yeah, what we also see, uh, we couldn't increase the number of uh, subscribers. And uh, if you look at science influencers on YouTube, which is becoming an a, 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 yeah increasing group now, so it, it's I think in the English speaking countries there are um, more science influencers than in Germany, and they are because of of the language also um, a little bit more successful. So they're they're. Um, numbers of subscribers are, are bigger than in Germany because the German audience is smaller. But if you look at um, Mr. Wissen to go, uh, my lab or some, uh, uh, or um, Dr. Watson, you can see, they now have also a big audience. So Mirko has about, I think, more than 1 million uh, subscribers now. And their videos have about more than uh, we are half a million, or you know the uh, video about Corona from Mai has more than six million uh, views. So, so they have really a big uh, reach. So uh, this is this was a reason why we think about a cooperation with science influencers, uh, but not to put our um, 
content on a, a influencer channel, uh, we we try to to uh, get more subscriptions on the Max Planck YouTube channel uh, with a cooperation uh, with Cedric and Mirko on our own YouTube channel. So they we invited them to make videos together with us uh, to to um, introduce the topic and to discuss with the scientists uh, within these uh, this this and was series. Um, and uh, yeah, what can we see? So. Uh, the, uh, the view numbers are not as high as for uh, the influencer channel themselves, but the influencer community uh, today is much bigger than our community. But what we can see is that um, um, every new uh, this and this video generates more new subscriptions to our channel than all videos before. So, so we see that that it's it's uh, it's a very good. Uh, tool to to um, build up a, a bigger community and bind the people to our channel. No, no, as you said, I mean, this is very important also in the context of the things we discussed before. It's like educating the public on certain topics uh, as, for example, like um, genetic engineering, right? Um, and so I feel like actually that the Max Planck Society is a, st a bit behind in this. So I, I'm not sure when you guys started with this whole YouTube and so on. <laughs> Sorry, to, to, I would say to general, like uh, the popularity of YouTube, uh, that it's kind of taking over uh, the general TV uh, outlet, right? It's more like a, a you can uh, watch when you want, and uh, also Netflix. Uh, these kinds of things are more on a, mm -hmm. like a common thing nowadays. Than I don't think younger people watch regular TV on the TV uh, when, it, when it appears, but rather they watch YouTube or Netflix, whatever. Um, exactly. And so using these platforms for uh, good communication, I think is really important. And I, I would like that, uh, I mean, so also one thing that uh, I think is a, a bit of a, how should I say, um, it's not being encouraged as much for PhD students, for example, to help with these things. Like, I feel like it's always, uh, you guys have to come up with this, you have to make the videos and everything, but the, the people that are doing the science, um, so we're far more people. So if maybe everyone contributes a bit to it, uh, this could be far more efficient. And also maybe having more videos uploaded and so on. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys want to have like um, more support or uh, in this direction that, uh, for example, the PhD students provide like some scientific knowledge to videos uh, and help scripting and so on because I think this only th through a collaborative effort uh, proper um, public outreach can be done so that you reach a lot of topics and people at the same time. I would like to, to um, uh, talk about our our campaign uh, My Machine and Me because this was a campaign where we incorporate uh, uh, yeah all of our PhD and postdoc students because we asked our institutes. I do not know if you follow this campaign. We we started it I I think in 2018, so for for one and a half year on Instagram. So we asked um, our institutes, could you get in contact with your PhDs and postdocs? and um, asked them if they would like to make a selfie about my machine and me uh, and, and give us a short, sh uh, briefly introduction in, in your research project. And this was a, really a wonderful campaign and we, we uh, received wonderful and, and very, very nice pictures. And afterwards we, we asked uh, all the PhDs and postdocs participating in this campaign if uh, they allow us to use these uh, really wonderful pictures uh, for for our image flyers and brochures uh, we use um, within the field of marketing uh, in in other countries so this was i think a wonderful example how we can go further or how we should go further to to um, make it possible that uh, our younger students can also participate in our uh, communication efforts. Uh, I'm, I'm completely uh, on your side, <laughs> you can say. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, because also talking to other PhD students, usually they seem really motivated to uh, explain science to other people because I think like you don't just start a PhD without being interested in science. So uh, you can get like your motivation across and um, I think this would basically help the whole public outreach thing. Um, yeah, as, yeah. And, and uh, uh, in, in front of this background, it, it would be interesting for you to know um, that in the Pact for Research and Innovation, I do not know if everyone is familiar with this. Uh, so I, I, I can explain it so for, for your audience. Um, it ensures, the Pact ensures an increase of uh, 3% uh, uh, for the research organizations every year. And in turn, the research organizations commit to certain goals. And uh, the Max Planck Society now for the new pact period, now starting in 2021, committed itself uh, to introduce young scientists to science communication and to offer appropriate soft skills courses for this purpose now in, in the, within the next four years. A workshop about communication and communication skills it's very important to talk about um, um, what is your image of your audience. So first, be, be very careful with your audience and accept that your audience has uh, an, an own view on the world. And now you have to ask, um, what is your role in the discussion with your audience? So is your audience only interested in your expertise? So then you can talk about your science and the limits in your field. In, this is very important because only the experts can talk about the limits in the fields. Um, the other case, if, if the audience wants advice, this is a situation at the moment um, in the pandemia. The politicians really ask for advice. So then you can say, okay, these are the facts. And uh, before this background, I would advise you, yeah, for example, to make a shutdown for the next four weeks. So this is advice. And the third and and uh, very very yeah um, difficult role is the role of an advocate. So to say, no, I am not only an expert, and I give you the advice: we should stop climate change. I'm, I'm now also an advocate, and, and, and I say, for example, we cannot drive any more cars fueled by fossil energies, and so, for example. So then you are in the advocate role. And the advocate role now is, is not only your expertise, it's also something of your individual opinion. And, um, and you have to be very clear that uh, the people in your audience, um, their individual opinion uh, was built up in the in the past by um, their own experiences, by their family background, by their religious background, by by their professional background, and so on. And and people don't give up their prejudices. Their, yes, their prejudices not so easily. They are very very fixed. And therefore, you have to be very, very careful. And um, sometimes it's it's easier uh, to ask people, why do you think so? And where do you have this information from? And and have you ever think about this in in another way? So so to signal your your audience, yeah, you are equal, and, yeah. and uh, this is a dialogue. Uh, yeah, from exactly. It's a dialogue between peers and never, you're not talking down to anyone. Yeah, I think, on island, I think we would say in Germany, I don't exactly, yeah. take, talk it, it, take the same expression in, in English. So on eye level, we would say. Uh, and, and therefore, it, communica communication is really a challenge. It has uh, very, very uh, different aspects and you have to take a lot of things in your mind. And, and I think the important lessons learned is... Uh, Take your audience serious. Uh, so this is really a suggestion I would give everyone. Okay, so basically don't be arrogant. Uh, yes, yes. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, I have uh, one more question more in a different direction. So you were mentioning before already uh, that there's this uh, initiative um, on like um, uh, public outreach uh, on genetic modifications. Are there any other initiatives within the Max Planck Society that are trying to do public outreach that people could join uh, now already? The initiative is about understanding animal research. Oh, sorry, understanding. Yeah. Uh, so yes. genetic engineering, um, uh, our, mm -hmm. our uh, scientists uh, give advice to the people in Brussels, for example, yes. But there's no, uh, yeah, the, you know, in 2019, we published a, a, a statement regarding genome editing. Uh, so, so to also to to give the Max Planck Society a basis. So this is also important to know. It's not easy for the society to make a statement. The scientists in our society also have some different opinions regarding different topics. And there was, it was not so easy uh, to get a joint statement regarding genome editing and, uh, and this statement was um, um, very elaborated regarding uh, uh, genome editing in the field of plants and genome editing in the field of humans, for example. It's, it's need, it needs a process to come to a joint statement where we say, okay, this now is our position. You know, definitely, because you, it makes yourself uh, um, attackable, right? Because uh, you have a position, and so people can, uh, yeah. Yeah, not only make us attackable, uh, you see this in the discussion uh, uh, about uh, uh, coronavirus. Uh, uh, Christian Rosten has a different position than uh, Hendrik Streeck, yeah? And uh, so... Uh, I think it's typical for science because scientists are always discussing. <laughs> uh, so how should we uh, interpret uh, these results uh, and what are, are the conclusions from these results and what are uh, our suggestions uh, taking this, these results in mind? So for this, and, and, and it depends on, on your, your um, um, expertise, Uh, are you a psychologist? Are you a virologist? Are you uh, doing research in the field of economy? And all these people uh, will have different positions and, and uh, yeah, will give uh, different suggestions. And therefore, it's, it's not so easy. Uh, I think our task is to, to make our results accessible to our audience. Explain things as simply as possible, I think it's the most important advice. And uh, the second, find a good story and uh, find good pictures uh, regarding your, your scientific results. So there was a very nice uh, picture from uh, Viola Prisemann. Um, every time the virus uh, makes uh, a goal, Uh, it uh, gets three uh, players more. So uh, I think this is a very nice picture to address the problem we have. So find good pictures and, and uh, explain these things as simply as possible is, is I think, the most important uh, aspect of communication. I think the, the virus and the goal analogy is a very nice way to think about communicating complicated values like the are not factor and stuff the complicated terms which we hear but in simple and understandable ways for everyone yes and i think uh, on that note uh, we really want to thank you for giving us uh, almost an hour of your time more than an hour of your time to discuss about communication science and, and uh, so many things related to the max Planck society and we really want to thank you for doing this with us thank you thanks for joining us and uh, hopefully we get to catch up uh, sometime Uh, in the future to see where Max Planck's progressed. I mean, pr hopefully not us, me or Nico, but probably the people who are taking the Offspring podcast forward in the upcoming years. Perhaps they get to discuss with you to see where the progress has become within the next few years. Nice to meet you. Very, It was very Yeah, it was really exciting. great. Thank you very much. Well, that was a really fun discussion. Right, Nico? Yeah, it was really nice. I mean, getting like an inside perspective of what the Max Planck Society thinks uh, science communication should be and also which parties uh, uh, they need to communicate with 
was really interesting to hear. Definitely. And it's also quite interesting to know that uh, the communication department is not just scientists like us. It's also people from different backgrounds, like journalists and people with uh, regular experience with interacting with with the public and with media. So I think that gives a new perspective to the whole whole narrative as well. Yeah, I think that's very important. I mean, uh, of course, scientists aren't educated uh, to be a journalist, so you need the expertise of actual journalists of how to communicate uh, whatever topics um, you need to address, right? So it's really good that they have this combination of people there. I, I think this is just a really necessary. Exactly. Okay, so and I think with that, we've come to this end of this two-part discussion with Dr. Christina Beck. And we really hope if you if you enjoyed it, please write to us at offspring.podcasts at phdnet.mpg.de. We would like to know what you think. Offspring Magazine, the podcast is brought to you by the Max Planck PhD Data and Science Communication Working Group known as the Offspring Magazine. The intro outro music is composed by Shinat Ramkumar and the pre-intro jingle is composed by Gustav Carizzo. If you have any feedback, comments or suggestions, please feel free to write to the email address mentioned previously. And... This episode was hosted by Srinath Ramkumar and Nikolai Horman, edited by Srinath Ramkumar, and produced by Srinath Ramkumar, Nikolai Horman, and Dr. Christina Beck. So, with that in mind, we'll see you all next week with a brand new interview with an another amazing guest. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and this is Srinath signing off for both me as well as my co-host Nico. Bye-bye. <laughs>